Uh, if you want to create more voltage, uh, basically you want to hook it in series, and that's the reason I did that. I wanted more voltage out of my system, and I'm going to go into that a little later. And if you wanted more current, which we, what I did is hook these up in parallel. And just to give you a quick overview, if you if you wanted to hook this up in parallel, I just show you how this would have looked, or how I would have hooked it up, in case some of you guys want to go that route. Just gonna erase some of these, so you won't get confused. So let's just say we're gonna start over at this point. We just have our strings of solar cells. Let's erase these green lines here. So again, we're just starting over with just three strands of solar cells not hooked up to each other yet. All right, so now, let's say all our positive ends were down here for each solar string of solar cells. And all our negative ends were up here. Again, I'm, I'm doing this for parallel now. All right, so the way we would hook this up is, I would have basically had all these negative connections here connected together with one huge bus wire. Well, some it's a, a different. You can hook these up different ways, but as long as all the negatives are hooked up to each other and all the positives down here are hooked up to each other. So just to keep it simple, let's just say we have one huge bus wire just covering this whole end of positive and this one huge bus wire up here. So basically, let's just say our circuit came out some kind of way like this. And that's basically how you would hook it up in parallel. All the Like I said, all the positives hooked up to the positive wire and the negative hooked up to the negative wire. So again, if you want more current, you'll want to hook it up similar in parallel, some kind of way in parallel. So. That's just one way you could go about it, but if you're trying to charge 12 volt batteries, it's, it's recommended to have at least 32 to uh, 36 solar cells hooked up in series. So now, let's just go into Ohm's Law. And i explain what Ohm's Law is in a moment. So going back to the basic definition of Ohm's Law, Ohm's Law defines the relationship between power, voltage, current, and resistance. One ohm is the resistance value through which one volt will maintain a current of one ampere. So again, reading the basic definitions, you probably you still probably a little bit lost here. So you actually see an example. Well, basically from Ohm's Law and get a couple of formulas or equations that will help me determine different uh, values or information that I may need to know. So, to remember those formulas, I remember a triangle. And on this triangle, I know that V is always on top. And then on the bottom here, I have I and R. The location of I and R really doesn't matter. That could be, R could be over here or R could be on the right side, it doesn't matter. And from that, the way that I can remember different formulas is, say I wanted to find V, the voltage, and R represents the resistance, just if I didn't say that a minute ago. So say I wanted to find the voltage. Well, that would be V equals, since I and R are right beside each other, I know that's multiplication. So that'd just be I, times R. Now let's say I wanted to find the current. So the current will equal V over R. And I know that's division. So voltage divided by resistance. And for the resistance, just apply the same method. That would basically be voltage over current. And, okay, so we'll have V over I. And a way that I remember this, if I don't even remember the triangle, I can notice that V is on top each time here. So it seems like voltage is never on the bottom. So that's one easy way of remembering it. Now, something else that we need, since we're dealing with watts, uh, we need to remember another formula. And basically, I remember that that's P. P stands for watts. P equals V 
times i. And from that, using some basic algebra, I can find out what the voltage is and what the current is. So, if I want to know the voltage from this formula here, all I have to do again is apply some basic algebra. And what I'm doing is, since I want to find the voltage, I will move this I over to P. And since I'm multiplying here, I'll be dividing here. But I won't really go, in, go into that too much. But this will equal V equals P over I. And if I wanted to find the current, I would just do the same thing, except this time I'll be dividing by the voltage. So it'll be P divided by V. So those are just a couple of formulas that I can use to remember without looking back at anything, just from this triangle and then just remember this one formula here. But it is a circle or some type of circle that has all these in it, but this is just my way of remembering it. But let's just say we just took a test and we... You know, we got an A on it, and we know these by heart now. So I'm just going to make up an example so we can use these formulas just to show you how it works. So let's say I'm just going to use our solar panel, the one that we made. Let's say the only thing we knew about it was it produced 63 watts and it produced 18 volts. That's the only thing that we knew about it. And what we want to know, I'm just going to write a column over here. Of information we know. I'm trying to make this a little bit wider. All right. So what we know is our solar panel produces 63 watts. That's for the entire solar panel, and 18 volts for the entire solar panel. Say we wanted to find the amps, and we can write amps with a symbol of A. So, if we want to find the amps, thinking back to the equations we just made an A on in class, we have our P, which stands for watts, and we have our V. So let's think what uh, formulas can we use to actually find the amps from these two values. Well, thinking back, we remember that P equals V times I, and since we want to find I, the amps, all we would have to do again is apply some basic algebra. So find I will be I equals P divided by V. So just plugging in our values, plug in the 63 to P, that'll basically be, and that rhymes, 63 watts divided by 18 volts will give us our I. So just putting that in our calculator, let me get my calculator out real quick. And that'll be 63 divided by 18 equals 3.5 amps. All right, so I'm just going to write that over here. That's information we now know about it. Now, let's try to find the resistance. And before I do that, let, let me try to explain what resistance is. Basically, what a resistance does is what its name basically uh, uh, means it resists uh, electrons from passing through a point so basically uh, the, the basic resistor looks like this when we're looking at it in a circuit and this would be uh, say the negative and that would be the positive you know whichever way it's flipped and the way a resistor looks in real life uh, I should have brought an example but if you want to uh, see the way it really looks, it's something like this. And it has different colors on it just to show you how many ohms it is. And again, like that's what most light bulbs have been it to prevent it from being so bright. Or you'll use resistor to protect something from uh, receiving too many volts or current uh, from passing through it. Well, current, it doesn't apply to voltage. But basically, if I had a, let's say, an LED. Hey guys, to speed up the process of me getting the rest of the videos out, just subscribe to this video as it does show me you guys are interested and I try to speed up the process of getting the rest of the videos out as I do have to edit these and I do try to make them interesting. So again, just subscribe to the video and I try my best to get them out a little quicker for you guys.